Hello, hello. Welcome, guys, to another episode of Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays Collection. I'm your host, Mike. Uh, today, guys, we're going to uh, explore three movies by the director, Sam Peckinpah. Uh, one of the, or actually two of these are new pickups for me. And uh, another one I got out to rewatch, just because, just because. Uh, but I wanted to feature it since I got some new stuff by him and everything. So let's start with the first movie. This is a movie I got off the shelf to watch because I was wanting to see it again. And um, it's still a movie that, you know, as many times as I've watched it, it it's still, you know, I, I feel like I don't remember all of it for some reason. I don't know if it's the... A transfer or something but it's a really it is a good movie it's a great movie and stuff but it seems like a movie for me that um i will be able to notice more and more stuff each time i watch it that, that's kind of what i'm trying to say is each time i watch this movie I, I catch a little bit more about it and stuff uh sam peck and paul you know what can i say everyone knows you know he made the wild bunch and he seems to be remembered just for the wild bunch and he was bloody sam and you know, etc. And he's made some really good movies. Uh, movies like uh, the ba the Ballad of Cable Hogue, which was a you know a movie with a lot of heart and warmth to it. He's made movies that just repulse you like Straw Dogs. Um, he's made uh, you know westerns. He's made you know Convoy for God's sakes. I loved Convoy when I was a little kid because I was obsessed with semis semi truck so that would be my first you know movie i ever saw by sam peck and paul was um uh convoy and matter of fact me and my dad put together a a, a model of the of the truck the semi the, the black mac truck uh that's featured in convoy and uh you know glue it and do all this stuff and paint it and stuff and um, I was pretty young when I did that, probably about six, five or six with him. And it was, you know, he did most of the work, of course. But anyways, uh, this is the first movie I, I wanted to rewatch. And I know I'll rewatch this many more times. Uh, this is a movie from 1977. By this time, Sam Peckinpah had a uh, cocaine habit and uh, he was a functioning alcoholic already. And uh, he was kind of at the end of his rope. He was just burnt out. You know, he, he needed to take a break. Um, he was, a lot of the studios didn't have faith in him anymore, you know, to put him on projects. So a lot of good stuff wasn't coming his way. Um, so, um, but what he did get, he, he did the best he could with, with what he had and everything. And uh, this movie stands out as like a movie that doesn't get mentioned that much of Sam's. And um, I, I think more, more attention needs to be paid to it. Uh, the movie's called Cross of Iron. And uh, it's, it's a World War II movie, uh, basically uh, from the point of view of the Rush, uh, of the Germans uh in their battle with uh the russians uh during that part of the war i believe this uh takes place like in 1943 um it's got a great cast uh james coburn uh stars uh, it's also got um, a really good performance by maximilian shell uh it's got james mason uh david warner and cinta berger uh, round out the cast and uh, it's really good uh, it's, it's a screenplay by Julia Julius Epstein and Walter Kelly and James Hamilton and uh, of course directed by James or Sam Peckinpah sorry James Peckinpah it's directed by Sam Peckinpah and I really do think this is just a movie that does not get any attention to and I, I believe it is overdue for say Arrow are one of the big bigger names in in home video companies to you know put this out you know give us a better transfer get a cleanup of it put some extras on there um, i know mike siegel did 
the great documentary about um, uh, about Sam Peck and Paul and uh, stuff like that. So he, you know, he could add some footage from interviews and stuff. I mean, it could be a good thing. So Cross of Iron, if you haven't heard of it, check it out. If you're a Peck and Paul fan and you've never seen this, you definitely need to get it and watch it. But yeah, this is the DVD version. It is available on Blu-ray. This is through Hen's Tooth Video, and uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, it could be it could be cleaned up a little bit, but it looks good. It's you know, it's pretty good. And um, let's see, it's got an audio commentary by Stephen Prince, who wrote a book called Savage Cinema. He also wrote a book on Sam Peck and Paul. Or actually, is that I can't remember if Savage Cinema is the same book or but he, he did he wrote a book on sam peck and paul that's really good uh, so there you go cross of iron now this blu-ray is a is a is a new pickup um i've already had this movie on dvd and it didn't look that great um and i know twilight time put it out but it, it was always expensive and um one of the reasons i wanted to upgrade to this edition is because it's got um and, and its bonus features it's got the uh hour-long uh feature i think this maybe was on television or something it's it's about an hour long um yeah it's 51 minutes long uh it, it's a movie called or a show movie yeah, it's a movie uh called uh uh noon wine and it stars jason robards and um I've always wanted to see that. I think I may have seen bits of it on YouTube or something, but I wanted a decent copy of it. So um, I ended up getting this, the Twilight Time uh, Blu-ray edition of The Killer Elite. Uh, this was a movie made in, I believe, 75. And uh, it stars uh, uh, James Caan. Uh, it's got Bo Hopkins, uh, Gig Young, Robert Duvall. It's a really good movie. Uh, at this time, I think there were stories of James Caan and Sam Peckinpah doing coke on the set, and it, it, this is where he's kind of the wheels are starting to get loose and almost come off the off off the ride for for Sam at this point. Uh, by this time, he you know he started to be getting into cocaine and stuff like that. So you know. So, he kind of lost his way a little bit, but it's, it's a good movie. Uh, it probably could have been a lot better, but it's a great action movie. It's got some it's got some weird ninja stuff going on at the end, but it's it's still great. I like it, like it, love it. It's Sam Peckinpah. I mean, it's not bad at all. It's 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 good. It's not his best, but it's good. Uh, but yeah, as a bonus feature on here, it's got a uh, noon wine, which is really good, and uh, just had to get that. But this thing always stays high priced and i got it brand new never been open um i got it on ebay i think i bid on it and i was the only bidder um so this thing usually goes like 60 dollars or more on ebay and i, and I, I got it for like 25 which i know that's still kind of high in a way but for this edition it's really cheap plus it's brand new and um like I said, it's got that bonus feature, which I don't think is available anywhere else. Um, it also comes with a uh, pretty cool booklet. It's got a little booklet in there. So, uh, there you go. The Killer Elite and Noon Wine. And finally, guys, this is a uh, edition, a movie that I have, I think I have three versions of it. Uh, the last version was a big deluxe box set from uh imprint the australian company and i got it and i thought well that's the be all end all of this movie you know that's the best version it you know that one's separated in two prints you got the theatrical and then you got the director's cut and uh this one is the same they did the same thing but this is the the beautiful artwork on this this is just love great to look at it looks great on your cake on your on your shelf you almost can't just put it like that. You got to kind of show it like that. But I'm talking about Major Dundee. And this is the uh, deluxe edition from Arrow. Uh, this is one that's got the poster. It's got all the bells and whistles that you expect from Arrow. And um, I got this uh, during an Arrow sale. 
um, and they had it really cheap and um, I, I snatched it up while I could before it you know went out of print or whatever but but yeah, it's Major Dundee, 1965, Sam Peckinpah. There was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, after this movie, it was kind of a debacle with the studio heads and everybody. And he didn't really work for a couple years. And then he would return with um, the Wild Bunch and uh, kick everybody everybody's butt, you know. And then everybody wanted to be Sam Peckinpah's friend and make a movie and stuff, but. This Arrow edition is just absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. Just the stuff that's included in this is just great. Um, this one is also separated into two editions. Disc one has the uh, extended version, which um, this is a uh, from a 4K scan. I think it's the same 4K scan that the imprint uh, edition had, I believe. Uh, it's got multiple audio commentaries. It's got two different film scores. It's got the original, and then they they did a they did, they redid the score a little bit. Uh, disc one, the extended version, has all the extras on it. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of new stuff. The main thing that I haven't seen was a short little documentary called Moby Dick on horseback. Now the other extras are from the. Uh, uh, the Mike Siegel documentary, The Passion and the Poetry, which I highly recommend if you've never seen that. It's great. Um, and ever ever since that documentary came out, every edition that comes out that's a Sam Peckinpah movie, they, they seem to use those as supplements, the, the features from that documentary, because he breaks it up in the movie, you know, each movie and stuff. So they, they basically do that on most of them um so yeah this is really cool it's got the you know the theatrical version on disc two which doesn't really have a lot of uh bonus stuff on there it's got a uh vintage behind the scenes thing called writing for a fall it's got some silent outtakes it's got the extended and deleted scenes on that one uh, and then you got the uh, you can do audio commentary for those deleted scenes uh, with uh, Glenn Erickson and uh, really good so I, I didn't put in the theatrical version I put in the uh, extended version I usually always watch the extended and that one had all the bonus stuff so so I wouldn't have to get up and flip discs and stuff so but man this has so much stuff in it, it it's such a great release i mean look at this booklet i mean this booklet is great i mean it's got this nice smooth feel to it it's it's just i mean look at it it's just packed it's a, it's about 57 58 page booklet it's got a lot of cool pictures and artwork uh movie posters all kinds of stuff and the beautiful stuff uh it comes with a poster which uh, replicates the the new artwork that um, Arrow did. So I'll I'll show you that. And then you get each one of the movies split up on their own in their own package. You got a uh, Major Dundee the theatrical version, which has a it has the the picture of um, gosh, what's his name? What is his name? Why can't I think of it? Why does this happen? I forget things. Uh, Richard Harris, yeah. A man caught a horse. But yeah, that's got Richard Harris on that one. And then on the second, the uh, extended one, it's got uh, uh, Charlton Heston on it. And uh, each one of these are like a card, one of the, like the cardboard slip cases. Uh, which you know they can get frayed up around the edges and stuff if you watch it enough and in and out and stuff if you're not careful and it would wear out quickly um, now the imprint edition has the, its own plastic cases amory cases and stuff and put it in there but but i really prefer that i mean if it has the the artwork is so nice it looks good um I know Eureka's done a few like that and stuff. And I mean, if it saves money 
and they could put out more features or do a little bit more of this, then it's a good trade-off, you know. But if they're going to do that and just skimp on other everything else, then yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a drag. But but overall, really good movie. I mean, it's. It's a movie I've come back to a bunch. It's 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 almost like not like a Sam Peckinpah movie, but it has all the Sam Peckinpah isms in it. It's it's almost like the big studio picture that he did, you know. And well, they're all for big studios, but this one was you know kind of started out as a standard type of movie, and he, he put his spin on it and everything, and it had a lot of problems. Had some directors, he almost got fired, or he did get fired, or a whole lot of whole lot of stuff. But you, you got to say, you know, really, I mean, this book, this edition is really nice. You got the, you got the, stir, got the sturdy cardboard case and everything. But, but in the documentary and stuff, it, it explains more about the, uh, the problems with the studio, uh, the producers, the, the money men. Uh, and everything so yeah this is a great release I mean if you've never if you don't own any major Dundees this is the one you need to get and uh, I believe I believe there's an American edition and a UK edition uh, with the region codes and stuff but this is the uh, this is the uh, the UK edition so there you go major Dundee really really good stuff now I, I, it, now, if the packaging, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, if the packaging and the artwork wasn't like it was, like as, like it is, I probably wouldn't have bought this edition, uh, just to, you know, save money, because I've already, I, I got the original DVD edition when it came out, uh, 2005, maybe, when they restored everything, and it's got the two different versions on there. And I had that for many, many years. And then Imprint's uh, box came out, and I got that one. Uh, and I thought, well, that's the be-all and end-all on this movie. But and then Arrow had to go... I think they not only one-upped Imprint, but they, they kind of two-upped them, if that's such a thing. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's something you need to get. And, you know, double-dipping, you know, it just depends. I guess it depends on, for me, the director... The movie itself, um, stuff like that, you know, I, I don't double dip all the time. It's just, it has to be a special thing. Sam Peckinpah is one of my favorite directors. So uh, when something nice comes out like that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it. So there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Give me some comments on this. I'm trying to make the video shorter and not try to talk too much about everything. Just kind of give you an overview and what I thought about it. And if I recommend it so um, so yeah comment let me know what you think uh, give me a thumbs up uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and um, my final you know review on this I mean the killer elite if you can find this used like you're rummaging at a store and you find it pick it up because it's a it's out of print it's expensive and it's twilight time uh, plus it's got yeah, noon wine on it which is well worth the price in my opinion I mean it's a, it's a, it's short but it's good Jason Robards is really good in it um, but yeah pick that up if you can find it because you get that plus it's a better edition better looking print of Killer Elite um, but you know most of all Major Dundee get that that's and then uh, check out Cross of Iron if you haven't seen it. Uh, again, I'm hoping one day somebody will put out a, a, a better Blu-ray edition of it. Uh, Hen's Tooth has a Blu-ray of it. And I think there's like some German releases and stuff. Uh, but it's kind of basically the same. Uh, but yeah, give that, give that a try. Check that out. Give it a chance and everything. And um, there you go. Viva Sam Peckinpah. So until next time, guys, I am Mike. Thank you for watching. I'm going to watch some good movies. You watch good movies, and I'll see you guys next time.